Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm just off to Fjordwood because our rotator on the um, log grab has uh, broken. I'll show you a picture of that just to uh, say what's happening. So I've got a replacement one over at Fjordwood in Warwickshire. So I'm going to drive over, have a look at that and see what kit they've got as well. So let's go. So here's our old one and the casting broke here. So I don't think there's very much that we can do about that. It wasn't bad, but it was leaking a lot, so it did need replacing. It's a bit of a shame, it only lasted, well, I think we only got it in less than a year. So, um, yeah, dangers of buying something cheap in China, you have to buy twice. Okay, so we're gonna get the chipper going again. We've got a rotator fix now. Got a nice pile here of stuff. So hopefully, God willing, we're going to have a really good day at this. It's our first sort of proper chip job, really, where we've used our own little chipper. And um, you know, normally I would have got a chance to do this, but well, we'll see how we go. Butter, really sweet. Famous last words, of course. Here comes the first load in. We'll just have a look and see what it looks like. It's not going to get any better material that we can put in the chipper. So, yeah. Here she comes backing up. nice and white as you'd expect not tweaky or anything quite dry that's been sitting there for a couple of years so yeah that's good so we're just sorting out all the ones that we're seeing won't take this pile. And we're getting into Willow now. I feel that's really on the limit but we'll give it a go and see how it goes.
place. I uh, didn't like it. Too much. Pick up that base and see if she'll go. Working well. Okay, so I had a good day's chipping. That's what we produced all behind us with the stack that was up the hill. Been quite impressed with what we managed to get through with that little chipper. Uh, that was some stuff that I had brought in. It's a little bit dank. It's been chipped about two months ago, but it hasn't dried out in cold weather. And we've got a little bit of blend of the two there. And then we've got our super dry stuff here. So that's been a cracking day for us. And we're just loading a truck now uh, with some wood fuel. So yeah, spot on to get when it comes in and goes out. It's all right, good stuff. Okay guys, I'm just up on top of the uh, hippo uh, feeding hopper and um, we've got this stirrer here, which just hasn't worked for about six months or something. So I'm actually gonna take it out because it's really awkward. It sort of blocks up quite a bit of the space when we're tipping in with a bucket and we just lose a lot of maize over the side and it sort of throws everywhere. Um, it was originally designed to stop it bridging in here, but um, it, Hasn't bridged too badly with it not running, so I'm just kind of thinking, look, let's put a, get ourselves a little bit more space, make things a bit easier for everybody. So there are a couple of bolts on this side, a couple on the other side. I'm gonna get the telehandler and pull it out with a crane. So yeah. There we are, the case just got the extender on the forks. So I can hang the chain on that, just pull her out. Because I chained it up and we're just gonna slowly go up now. If K comes forward a bit. Right, 
subscribe. There's one last bolt on that corner I've got to knock out. So it's going to trap on that bottom maybe. Oop, there she goes. She's up. Taking her up, okay. Keep going, okay. Have her out. So this is where you wish you had a bit of a longer boom on your telehandler. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Kate's doing a good job getting it pulled out now. Flicking it back up. And we're out. So that gives us a lot more space inside the hippo. You can see the old maze or whitey there. Um, and there she is. Just taking it back down. We did put a bit of work into that, so it's a shame it never ran. But I kind of gave up with the electricians, and as I said, it wasn't bridging. So I just thought, well, we'll gain a little bit of space to make <clears throat> tipping in easier, because the width of that bucket is only just wide enough when this is in place to, um, to fill the hopper. So there we are, that makes things a little bit easier when we're loading up now. That's been one of those little jobs that you always put off. I kept thinking, I must do that. So I'm glad it's now done. used to hit the motor like that but anyway now it doesn't so that's good so we're just on the softwood now uh, this wood sat on the top of the stack uh, that we're chipping which is up over there and it sat there for about two years and we'll moisture test it just have a bit of a look at it but it should be sub 20 percent so it doesn't even need to go in the kiln which is great because we've got a few orders for softwood now guys so we're just up in our Cranford wood here um <clears throat> it's been a fair amount of rain ditches are starting to flow in the last few days and we're just doing a bit of thinning of all the ash in here father planted in here 30 years ago all this and um we got tim working away in here um he's come down and beat back this is all covered in brambles down here so he's he's got the got this all kind of beaten back a bit which is good so we can get access to it and there's some really nice nice lengths coming out here so yeah it's been spot on we're leaving all the cherry and the oak up as i said just taking out all that ash so that's good so the old truck's back <clears throat> they did notice this. they've mended this side which was the uh stub axle and the new abs sensors new disc pads put some new tires on as well because I seem to think that was a bit of a problem so actually it's running pretty sweetly now um, we've been um, just taking out the kiln and we're just finding that again the oak is just not drying down so we're just having to hand ball <coughs> all the uh, all the ash out and then into bags so that's what Blaze is doing he's going to take some more stuff down from the wet pile and we've got uh We've got, got all these lumps here of oak, which are all, and some of them are ash as well, actually, to be fair. Just the big stuff just needs a little bit longer, but we're just that busy on, on bags today that we are 
we're doing what we can. So we've reorganized the wood chip shed. That's all the super dry stuff. We've cleaned out all this corner here. This is our recently chipped stuff, which is that pile. And a little bit of this older, older stuff chip. You can just see it's a little bit sort of darker in color. But this gives us a nice little space because next week we've got a container coming full of Eastern European wood that uh, we're just gonna help with ours because we're just, just sort of struggling a little bit behind the, behind the curve. So that's the plan there. Okay guys, been a busy old week. Uh, we've got out four or five loads of the wood chip. Uh, we got our gear out of the kiln. Um, as you saw, we were picking out all the lumps of oak in there. They've got back and gone back in. Two cages full, definitely worthwhile because it was wet. Uh, we've still got a chunk of bags left. We got through half the orders. These will go out all on Monday. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> the rush it's going to be slightly over now because it's been a bit manic just trying to dry wood and get it out um but anyway i hope you enjoyed that vid and um we'll catch you next time